Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are with the 10th chapter of microwave engineering where the microwave signal has been having a transmission with the help of transmission line called as strip line and further it has been modified after 1965 to the form of micro strip line here. So micro strip line is very very popular comparison with the conventional strip line we have seen in the very first video. We have solved selected problems based on to both the transmission lines. Also we have addressed how the derivation is accounted for the characteristic impedance of micro strip line. The losses have also been reported as the ohmic losses, the dielectric losses and the radiation losses. Now let us address the parallel type of the strip line. So here we start with our topic parallel strip line. So in the parallel strip line as the name suggests we have parallel strips and these are made up of the two perfectly conductive material whereas they have been separated by a dielectric slab and it has certain thickness to make the separation. So for better understanding we can take the help of a schematic diagram. This is the schematic diagram with respect to the parallel strip line. So in this diagram we can see the two parallel strip made up of the perfect conductor that have been shown for the cross section with the shaded portion there. Now we take the three axis to help the dimensions made more clear. This is the z axis, this is the x axis and this is the y axis measurements. Intersection is the origin at all the values of x, y, z to be zeros here. So as these are the conductors, uh, this much of material is made up with the dielectric. So here the dielectric is characterized by mu sub x d comma epsilon sub x d, the corresponding permeabilities and that of the permittivity values here. Whereas the distance of separation is simply denoted by small d here, whereas for the two perfectly conductive plates here that are parallel to each other, we have the width represented by w here. Now for such a structure of strip line as we have the two perfectly parallel and perfectly conductive states here. So let us discuss about the distributed parameters. So with respect to the distributed parameters that we can talk about the inductance value L, the capacitance value C, further the resistance and that of the conductance represented by G here. See the parallel strip line is very similar to that of the two conductor transmission line here. So therefore as like the two conductor transmission line it will be supporting a quasi state of transverse electromagnetic mode of microwave signal propagation there. So considering this TEM mode of propagation along with the lossless condition there and the propagation towards the positive Z direction we take into consideration the dimensions we have represented onto the schematic diagram and express the equation for inductance capital L along the two conductive strips. So L is given in terms of mu sub x c divided by d mu sub x c in multiplication to d and it is further divided by w here. So this is measured in terms of Henry's per meter. So let us outline this equation for distributed parameter number one which will be helpful for another derivation and into the problems also we can use. So in this equation whatever mu suffix c it was the suffix is to mention the portion in the structure of parallel strip lines to be of conductive type here. Next to that the capacitance between the two conductive strips is represented by capital C and it is expressed as epsilon sub x d 
into W divided by small d here. So it is measured in terms of farads per meter. So here also I outline this particular formulation helpful. So in this representation, the suffix d to that of the epsilon. So epsilon represents the permittivity value or the dielectric constant you can say. So it is corresponding to the dielectric material, not the conductive material. Hence it is epsilon suffix d here. Next to the capacitance parameter, we have the mention of series resistance by capital R, which is computed by having twice of the surface resistivity capital RS divided by W, which can further be expressed as twice divided by W in multiplication to the square root that has pi F mu C divided by sigma C here. So this is measured in terms of ohms per meter here. So let us outline this another distributed parameter here. So in this expression, the surface resistivity value R suffix S is denoted in place of square root of, we have pi F mu C divided by sigma suffix C here. And this is a measure of ohms per square unit, whereas sigma suffix C is measured in terms of moles per meter, it is the conductivity value here. So at last, the distributed parameter in terms of the conductance represented by capital G is equal to for the strip line sigma suffix D into W divided by small d here, it is measured in terms of moles per meter here. So this parameter also I outline. So in the calculation for the conductance of strip line here, we have sigma suffix d. So this d refers to the conductivity value of the dielectric material, which is contributing to that of capital G here. So after the representations of equations for the inductance L, capacitance C, the resistance R, and that of the conductance G, which are called as distributed parameters because all are measured per unit length. So the measurement units were correspondingly Henry per meter, Farads per meter, Ohms per meter, and Mohs per meter. Now let us address the competition of characteristic impedance. So the characteristic impedance is denoted by Z0 and we consider lossless condition here. So for the lossless type of the parallel strip line, Z0 is computed as having a square root of the ratio L divided by C here, which can be further expressed as D divided by W square root of, we have mu suffix D divided by epsilon suffix D here. So the permeability of the dielectric material and the permittivity of the dielectric material have been considered to make the computation here. So this can also be further expressed in terms of 377 in multiplication to small d divided by square root of epsilon rd into w here. So the condition for this one is we have the width of the parallel strip lines to be very, very greater than the difference between the them. So it is small d, w is very, very greater than d here. So for such type of the parallel strip line where we have represented the characteristic impedance, the further next parameter is denoted for the phase velocity. Phase velocity in general can be denoted as V sub X P, which is the ratio of angular frequency omega to that of the phase shift constant beta. In terms of the distributed parameters, we have it 1 divided by square root of LC, which can further be extended to the form 1 divided by square root of mu suffix d, epsilon suffix d here, or it can also be expressed as constant c divided by square root of epsilon r d here. So c is the velocity of light into the air or free space medium. So as this is velocity, it is to be measured in terms of meters per second here. Now the equation for characteristic impedance we have given before also. And now when we have the characteristic impedance, the before time it was for the lossless condition, the characteristic impedance Z sub 0 for 
the lossy type of parallel strip line so that time the range of micro frequencies to be considered is for r is very very less than omega times l and g is very very less than omega times c here so that time the characteristic impedance z0 can be approximated to the formulation where we have square root of l by c is equal to we have 377 times d divided by square root of epsilon rd into w here so this is for the condition w which is very very greater than that of the d here so so far we have seen the distributed parameters in terms of r l g c along with the equation for characteristic impedance now let us have the attenuation losses to be accounted for the parallel type of the strip line here so to see the attenuation losses we first of all see the account in terms of the total propagation given by the propagation constant gamma here so in terms of r l g c the distributed parameters or the lumped elements i can say it is square root of we have the first bracket r plus j omega l here and this bracket is multiplied to the another bracket that has g plus j omega c so along with the lumped elements per unit length here we have the frequency contained represented by angular frequency omega here the condition to have this propagation constant equation satisfied is that r is less than or equal to at very level omega into l and g is very very less than omega into c further the gamma propagation constant can be approximated to the value 1 by 2 in the bracket capital r in multiplication to square root of c by l added to g square root of l by c here which is further added to j omega times square root of lc here now as we have this much of portion without any j i can say this is the real part whereas omega into square root of lc is multiplied to that of the j we can say it is the imaginary part so therefore further we can express the attenuation constant in general alpha given by 1 by 2 in the bracket r in multiplication to the square root of c by l added to g in multiplication to the square root of l by c here which is to be measured in terms of neighbors per meter and we have the phase shift constant represented by the imaginary part beta is equal to omega square root of lc here measured in terms of radians per meter here now in the equations of the alpha we have r l g and c if we substitute the equations that we have derived for the parallel type of the strip line in the distributed parameters so that time we can get the new form of the equation so correspondingly we obtain for the conductive material hence representing alpha suffix c the measure of attenuation due to the conductive parallel strips there we have 1 by 2 capital r in multiplication to the square root of c by l in the form 1 by small d the distance of separation between the two parallel plates into the square root of we have pi f epsilon suffix d here and this is divided by sigma suffix c so finally representing it in terms of neighbors per meter whereas for the dielectric substrate that separates the two conducting parallel strips there we account the attenuation denoted by alpha suffix d which is equal to 1 by 2 times capital g in multiplication to the square root of l by c here finally expressing it in the terms of after substitution of the distributed parameters 188 times sigma suffix d divided by square root of epsilon suffix rd here so this is also in terms of neighbors per meter 
So this was all the details with respect to the parallel strip lines we have seen. By the next lecture, we shall be having a practice of single problem and then we shall move further in the same chapter to see another forms of the strip lines there. So I hope you enjoy learning for the subject microwave engineering. For more knowledge and information, you can subscribe to eKeda channel. Thank you.